So, what this is, it's a nice mini. Um, my parents have just driven up, off up there. There's a railway bridge. Um, so just started a new walk. There's one of those traditional English telephone boxes. It may even have a telephone in it, I'm not sure. It may just simply be there for tradition's sake, but it could even have a telephone in it. You never know. There's very few public telephones left now in these days of mobile phonery, but you just forget your mobile phone, go out and ask to borrow somebody else's mobile, and uh, they'll give you a funny look. So uh, it's, it's a bit difficult these days if you need to use the phone and you forget your mobile. But um, uh, King's Head's down there, a pub. Over this side you've got something called the King's Lodge, which is a hotel, or inn, with also the sort of bar. You've got Hunter's Bar, this is Hunton, this is Hunton Bridge. And King Charles II, the restoration monarch, after Cromwell, had a lot of connection with this area. He used to like to come and hunt here, King's Lodge. That's why it's called, it's 1642, and he used to like to go and stay in there. And of course, not far away from where he wanted to stay, he wouldn't have wanted, I mean, this railway bridge wasn't here then, don't worry about that. Um, but most people who know history, the history of England will know that they were at it, especially as it was just after Oliver Cromwell in his Puritan clampdown on anything like sex or things like that, uh, they were at it like hammer and tongs. So uh, the king didn't want to be worse off uh, in that area than anybody else. So the king was consorting with the most notorious um, actress of the time, whose name was Nell Gwynn. Now Nell Gwynn, a bit of a Mole Flanders kind of character from a very poor background. Um, she started life, uh, she only lived to the age of, of um, 37. She may have been born in something like 1630 or 1640, around the earlier half of the 17th century. And uh, all of this was fields then, this is all fields then, um, and forests that the king could come out of London and hunt around for boar. And uh, of course he wanted to have his mistress at hand as local legend has it and one of the houses up here we'll come to it not immediately. I'll tell you when we do. It's not these ones. But one of the houses that we're going to come to in about five minutes is Nelgwyn's. Lovely sea and there. A lovely copper beach. Lovely goose grass. Um, Talk a little bit about goose grass in a minute, maybe. But uh, look at that brilliant orange car there. I don't mean brilliant in the sense of uh, of uh, that it took any particular intelligence to paint the car orange, but uh, sort of brilliant as in the sense of brillant, shining, sort of shining colour. So is that Mini, for that matter, Mini Cooper, Austin Powers. Volkswagen, Adolf Hitler, I'm not only joking, um, although that's what it was, Volkswagen was initially the people's car, it was supposed to be a, 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 people, a car for the people, for the, for the folk, das folk, and the, the fascists were all into that idea of das folk, and so Volkswagen is a little bit of a shaky name, it's nevertheless survived. It's kind of become an acceptable face, but that's where it it uh, originated anyway. The 
idea of a people's car for das Volk, das Deutsche Volk. Oh, looks a little bit like Pansy, that P12 N NSY. Now that's something for my son, don't worry, be happy, that's the song he always sings. He's only got one so song to sing as George. He just sings, don't worry, be happy, all the time. So 25 Hamilton Road, that's that one. That's not Nogwin's house either. So, Nell Gwynn was known as the Protestant Whore. There was another woman whose name I can't remember, but she was Duchess of, I think, was it Southampton? That was her big, you know, rival for the attentions of King Charles II. And uh, that woman was called the Catholic Whore. And uh, one time, when uh, Nell Gwynn was driving in Oxford in her carriage, um, people said that she was just, you know, that got her confused with the other one and also called her, you know, a Catholic whore. And she put her head down and said with a grin, sorry ladies and gentlemen, you've got me confused. I'm the Protestant whore, which I thought had a certain style to it. I didn't think so at the time because I wasn't around then, but I thought so when I read about it in the Wikipedia article which I read earlier in order to know about Nell Gwynn knowing that I was going to walk past Nell Gwynn's cottage today as part of my walk from Hunton Bridge back to Hamel Hempstead this being 8 kilometres 8 kilometres is now the... I did a six, I did 5, I did 6, I did 7 now I'm doing 8 so uh, it's a stroll, I'm not taking, I'm not trying to do it in any particular record time but it's going to take me maybe even three hours to do it, I don't know I'm in no hurry but uh, it's there to get the weight down let me just tell you that I've, my, my parents have got in their house a scale it's quite nice but it's not Nell Nel, Nel Gwynn's one either So, they've got a weight scale which does things in stones, this being England, stones and pounds, which I'm, I've been out of England so long I don't really think in stones and pounds anymore. It's nice, Holly, you don't get that in Warsaw. Nice colour on that one. So, uh, nice Viburnums down there. Nice. Isn't it wisteria again? I, found, I did that, some of that in Cyprus. Hanging down off that lovely cottage there on the corner. There's really a certain style to homes in southern England, I have to say. They do make the best of the space that they've got. It's a little bit of a crowded place in comparison to most of Europe, but they really make the best of the space they've got. And the use of plants is always very skilled and So Nell Gwynn, who acted in a lot of Dryden's plays and no doubt Richardson and Goldsmith and all the rest of them, um, she was she started off as an orange wench, an orange girl. Uh, the orange girls within the theatre they used to um, they used to run around with refreshments um, inside the theatres taking like oranges and which they called at that time China oranges that was the the name of the orange in the, in the 17th century it was usually referred to as the China orange they didn't just call it the orange they called it the China orange um, in uh, in most of Europe they were calling um, oranges China apples which is where the term sinus apple uh, in Dutch and and in German, sinus apfel um, comes from Chinese or China apple. So here we are on Gallows Hill, Hamilton Road, carries on up north, Hunton Bridge. 
Road. This is still Hamilton Road, I didn't think so. I thought this was already Gallows Hill, maybe it is from this point. Hard to say sometimes where one street stops and another starts. Anyway, this old house is nice, but it's also not Nell Gwynn's cottage. We're not far off it now. I used the Google Street Walker to be pretty sure what I was about. However, the Wikipedia article doesn't show that this was Nell Gwynn's cottage. The fact that we think that this was Nell Gwynn's cottage comes really out of local legend passed down from generation to generation in this area. So uh, well, I'm not far off being able to show you it now. Of course, when, when King Charles II died, There we are. That's Nell Gwynn's cottage. And that's a 17th century house. Still preserved in all its beauty. I shall focus up on it a little bit. I won't. And effectively it amounts to Gallows Hill 11, yeah? But uh, as I say, it doesn't show you but that's no, no, there's no plaque, there's no anything. All we know is from local legend that that had been the house that Nell Gwynn used to stay in 